and welcome to Coaster Waffle, where today we will be reviewing Alton Tower's new dark ride, The Curse at Alton Manor. Now, we recently visited Alton Towers on the day after it opened, and after our first ride on The Curse at Alton Manor, we were thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. Before we go on to the spoiler section, we're just going to talk about the overall experience and the area of the park that it is in, known as Gloomy Wood. Well, yeah, when you first approach Gloomy Wood, you can tell that the atmosphere is a lot better. It feels a lot more sinister. I mean, I thought some of the jaw branding was quite childish before, uh, but I think really it has improved a lot. The queue line atmosphere is really good as well. There's lots of Easter eggs of old and current attractions on the gravestones. And overall, the uh, queue line walkthrough is a really good experience. Yeah, I agree completely. Um, yeah, without talking about what's actually in the queue, I think that sums it up perfectly. Also, I'm happy that they sort of revitalised some of the stuff in the area. So, for example, the uh, what used to be the Nitrogeni shop in the centre of the uh, sort of gloomy wood plaza, that's reopened now. And that's looking fantastic, as always. And also the, uh, the Spooky R Us shop, that's now been uh, redone, and that looks good. Yeah, so... Um... As you enter the uh, ride, there is a pre-show experience. Now, we didn't spend too long on this experience, but it's sort of a walkthrough, but you can stop and have a look at it. And that sort of sets the scene nicely for the ride you're about to experience, obviously, not saying too much about the plot. Yeah, it's basically the uh, <laughs> the old jewel queue, except it's been done up quite nicely. It is really good, and I'm glad they've redone that part as well. It's definitely uh, fitting for the ride. Now, onto the actual ride experience itself, without spoiling too much, it is absolutely brilliant and I do recommend you get onto it. But um, if you have sort of younger riders, this might not be suitable for them like Jewel used to be. Jewel was quite family friendly, whereas this, this might be a bit too sinister for some, for, for younger children, especially sort of under, under eight, 100%, it might be a bit too much for them. I'm just saying, do not do not go into this thinking it's just a revamp of Jewel because it's definitely more scary than it was before. Anyway, now we're going to move on to the spoiler section. So, if you do not want any spoilers, do not go on with this video. Ride it first and then come back. But make sure to subscribe for more videos. Anyway, so moving on, obviously, this is the new Dark Ride. And they obviously took the word Dark very literally, as there are multiple sections on this ride where there is absolutely nothing. Yeah, this is probably my British cr biggest criticism of this ride, to be honest. Um, there's Those sections are just so bad in comparison to the rest of the ride. I mean, you're just looking around and you can't see anything, and it's so disappointing, especially with the standard of everything else around it. Like, it's actually it's bewildering how sort of bad it is, and I think... If going forward, if Alton Towers do want to do more work to this area, uh, to this ride, this is definitely where they need to put the most work into it. Now, from what I've heard at the minute, there are no actual plans for these areas, so they are actually meant to be staying as they are. I think some of the old dual theming is actually in these areas where it's obviously not obvious and not lit up, but it is a real shame because it would be a world-class dark ride if it wasn't for these areas and there's quite a few of them where there's just absolutely nothing yeah it's really bad it's just so dull and i don't get why alton towers even kept <clears throat> kept this sort of stuff in it was similar with jewel with some sort of the special effects not working so they just turned the lights off and it really is just a shame like i wish they did more with it but i guess the, the rest of the ride certainly makes up for it so now i think my other criticism of this ride is probably the finale because the build up to this is absolutely stunning. The the every every scene is incredible and it builds up beautifully. But then the finale is just sort of a bit it's just a bit it's just not very good. Yeah, I mean there was sort of this rising tension throughout the ride. Obviously the storyline is that you're in this haunted house and this doll's house with um, Emily Alton <clears throat> and obviously you learn a bit more about her throughout the uh, thing but you like get multiple appearances of her throughout the ride and it's really quite exciting and then you get to the final few scenes and it just peters out and there's not much to do there and then you get back to the station. Yeah, after you go through the dollhouse there's a couple of really good jump scares with different dolls coming out from each side 
But then as soon as those jump scares are over, you literally just meander through through some children's toys. Like I don't, it's not scary. And in comparison to the other scenes where it is absolutely terrifying, it, it really is a bit of a letdown for this ride. I've got to say. But as as we've said before, the the build up definitely makes up for it. It's absolutely brilliant. Some of the theming and the effects that they've achieved, it, the effects aren't overdone. That is the main thing. You still get that like pure fear just generated by what's actually physically there, not using special effects like um, 3D mapping, that sort of stuff. Yeah, we definitely need to move on to some of the positives now. So I'd say the uh, use of effects was very good. It, it was sort of in a tasteful way, it wasn't too much. Like, I know with a lot of dark rides, you can get, like, loads of screens used and stuff, whereas in this one, there was a few projections, but it all worked in conjunction with physical sets, so it had a good effect. It wasn't like where you can get it where it's all screens or all just projections. <clears throat> yeah, 100%. I completely agree with that point, really. Yeah, the, the physical props have been masterfully created. They are really good. And as Tom said, the conjunction with the plot and with the the ride and everything, it's just incredible. So one of the first memorable scenes is the uh, dining room scene. You can see loads of like skeletons at dining tables, obviously. This is nearer the start. It's not as intense as later on, especially with the effects, but it's a nice build-up. There's lots to see in this scene. Yeah, this area definitely still feels a bit like the old jewel, a bit more childish with the skeletons being lit up and in nice like party suits and stuff. Uh, and the whole the whole room isn't as sinister as the uh, the rest of the ride, but it is, and as Tom said, it's just a nice build up. And the room is definitely a significant improvement over the previous dining room scene. So overall, no complaints. <laughs> now the next major scene on this ride is the rotating tunnel. Now on the previous dual attraction, this uh, this rotating tunnel often didn't operate, which was a real shame. Uh, and over my time experiencing Jewel, I can I can only remember a couple of times where it was actually working. So it's nice to see it back, and uh, I've got to say the effect it gives is absolutely absolutely sens sensational. It is really good. Yeah, and um, what they've done is they've added a uh, clock effect at the end of this wall, which spins in conjunction with the tunnel, and overall as you're going through it creates a really good effect. I mean, I would say the effect there is better than any effect on hex in what you actually feel and like the sort of distortion it creates is really really good yeah and to be fair i'm not even sure if the track itself is actually twisted in that section i don't know if that is the effect that made me think that or if it's actually sort of on the side of it it's hard to tell so yeah but though no that that effect is absolutely brilliant it's well done there's writing on the inside of the tunnel that adds to the effect and obviously the clock in conjunction with it. Absolutely amazing. 10 out of 10 for effects. So after the tunnel, you whip around the corner and you see a sort of model of Emily Alton and then behind her this like projection of this like demon comes up behind her and it's a really, really well made effect. Yeah, it's like this huge, huge shadow and it does, it is very ominous and it is very good and I'm very impressed with how they managed to create that. Very good effect. Now, moving on to the next scene, which is the spider scene. Now, because the spider was in the previous draw attraction, I kept on thinking, how are they going to incorporate this here? Because it's a massive prop, and I would, was expecting it to still be here. But basically, what they've done is they've changed it from sort of the yellow green hue that it used to have to just black. Uh, and basically, they've also incorporated some moving shadows and uh, the whole sort of idea behind it is that it's about the fear of spiders and how that sort of correlates to the fear of the house. But no, that, the effects there are really well done. So you get, the, you get a shadow of a spider running across the wall and then you look up and this massive black spider just appears above your head. It is really well done and it is builds to the, the horror of the attraction. Yeah, and I would just like to say through all of this you are being narrated by Emily Alton and you can hear this sort of voice following you around. So, for example, in that section, she says something like, Are you scared of spiders? And, <laughs> yeah, no, the, the audio is definitely a significant improvement over the uh, previous attraction. It is, it is really good, it's clear, you can hear it and it definitely builds up the tension of the ride. Like, it really does feel like through all these scenes you are being chased by this ghost of Emily Alton, mm. so 
and that's obviously the effect that they've wanted to create but it is really well done no it's impressive and uh yeah it's definitely definitely gives sort of that that tension that really makes the horror of this ride come through it is it's really well done so after this sort of sequence you do reach what i would say is when it's working the best effect on the ride 100 percent. i in fact i think this should have been the finale just because of how how good and how sort of real this feels it is the best scene on the ride 100 percent. yeah so um i mean it's very easy to miss when you're on the ride so just be careful to look out for it but when you enter this room it seems quite dark and you're on some straight track if you look to your right then you can see a reflection of yourself but emily alton will be in the ride car with you uh, i mean the, eff the effect isn't as good if you're in sort of the right seats but it's still really impressive how they've managed to achieve this effect and it still feels like Emily Alton's with you. Yeah, like, it's sort of really, it, it's a shock when you see it because, like, it is the typical horror movie where, like, the ghost is sort of in the car with you and it's like... <clears throat> yeah, it's almost surreal, the effect. It's really good. It almost makes you think, hang on, is there actually someone next to me? Yeah, so, I, I, I did actually check. So yeah, it, this is this is the best effect on the ride. So yeah, make sure not to miss it. Look to the right when you see the mirrors. And also when you reach the end of this sort of long straight, there is also another effect, and it is a, a jump scare from a doll on the left-hand side. So yeah, that, that, really, that really sort of adds to this climactic moment. Because obviously, the doll, you're like thinking, is this doll next to me? And then all of a sudden, bang, the doll jumps out in front of you. And it is, it's really good. It's definitely quite scary. So yeah. Very impressive, good effect. One of the next major scenes, obviously, this was um, leaked in the uh, press release that happened a few days before the ride opens, and it's where you travel through um, the entrance to the doll's house. Yeah. So, uh, this whole prop is just absolutely stunning. It's really well made, and it is really good. So you've got the actual sort of physical dollhouse build, and then just above us, another little dollhouse. But... Basically, what this does is it sort of introduces the uh, the final act of this ride, and it is really, really good in doing that. Definitely adds to the whole plot, the whole theme, and the whole sort of horror, child, but childish effect. Now, so on the other side of the doll's house, which is sort of you know the actual uh, childlike area, that's how I'll describe it. Um, there's just loads of toys scattered around, and the first the first part of this area is really good because you get loads of these jump scares. There's a jack in the box that pops out and scares you. There's loads of dolls scattered around, loads of good jump scares. It is really, really well made. Uh, but I do think this probably should have come a bit earlier in the ride, to be honest, because it, the end of this area really does spoil it. Because after these really good jump scares, you just get a sort of slow section where you just go around and around and around, and it's not... It's not really that scary, it's just kind of, you just me meander through it until the end. Yeah, I mean, I sort of remember, I'm not sure if this is correct or not, but there was this sort of like garden scene, but there wasn't really that much to it. It was just like, you're there almost. It, there wasn't anything impressive to look at really. May have been a few effects that I missed, but as a finale after what you've just gone through, it really doesn't hit well. Yeah, no, it's not good. But the, the garden scene you were <coughs> describing is actually just before this. And basically it's really good because what actually happens is, so this is where sort of the 13 sort of hooded person is on the left on the old dual attraction. Whereas now they've basically covered it in sort of a black cloth, like a scarecrow almost. And that's really good. Uh, and then as you turn the corner, you see Emily Alton head down and the swinging in this... Uh, in this chair and that is a that's a really good effect i also think this would have made a better climax than the actual climax we see which is just this yeah. the end of this dollhouse i mean that just shows how bad the ending is because it's clearly not too memorable is it compared to what you've already gone through in the ride it really sort of finishes on a bit of a down i know obviously they may have had some constraints with like space obviously where to put the effect because they couldn't just create a completely new layout for the dark ride yeah. but <clears throat> overall i think it could have been 
executed a lot better. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think I think the actual issue that this ride experience was with the dollhouse. There's only a few places where you have enough room to put that big of an a big of a impressive prop without sort of limiting the amount of space you've given yourself. So I do kind of understand, but I just wish they did a little bit more with the finale and obviously with the dark spaces. They're, they're the two biggest sort of negatives on this ride, but everything else, absolutely incredible. The effects are just absolutely beautiful. Give the give the horror, they give the tension that really builds up uh, and it's quite scary. So yeah, don't, don't bring any young children on this ride. Uh, this is definitely more for your hardened dark ride enthusiasts. So I would say that just about wraps up most of what we've got to say about the rides. But obviously huge credit's got to go for um, Merlin Magic Mating. Well, no, that, that, that's something completely different. <laughs> um, Merlin Magic Making for the uh, quick turnaround. <laughs> <laughs> Because this ride is absolutely incredible. It is really well done. The props, the effects, the uh, 3D mapping, the shadows, the screens, everything is put together so well. So yeah, really, it's a really big well done to them. So this brings us on to our final ratings. I would have to give this an 8.7. It's not perfect. It's not the best dark ride in the world, but it's one of the best in the UK. Um, yeah, not much more really to say. Now, for me, I was really impressed with this ride, and I'm going to sort of take the negatives, not as harshly as I normally would, and I'm going to give it a slightly beneficial 9.5, purely because of the really impressive effects during the ride. So that gives us an overall Coaster Waffle rating of 9.1. Very good. This is the first Dark Ride we've reviewed, so we hope you enjoyed the video. Yeah, I mean... Stay tuned because we will also be reviewing Monster House at Flamingo Land at some point in the distant future. Obviously, I think that's much better to this ride, but obviously, you'll have to subscribe for this. Anyway, if you do like Alton Towers, make sure to smash a like on the video and subscribe with notification bells clicked so you never miss one of our absolutely incredible YouTube videos ever again. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry. Goodbye.